Hey everybody, Robin from Backscatter here. Jim from Backscatter here. And today we've got the new OM System 90 millimeter macro lens. So Jim, tell us a little bit about why we're excited about this lens and what are we gonna be comparing it against? Well, we've been waiting for quite some time for a new macro lens from Olympus or now OM Systems. Mm -hmm. And 90 millimeters, a longer focal length, that's really cool because you get more working distance. So you can be a little bit further away from the critters. Mm -hmm. So if they get a little spooked by you, you have some working distance for that. Other thing is uh, this one will do two to one macro now, um, whereas most other macro lenses will only do one to one macro. We'll go over what that means if you're not sure what that means. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna compare it against the Sony 90, which is a full frame version of a macro lens to see how that stacks up. We're also gonna compare it against the original uh, Olympus 60 millimeter lens and also against the best macro camera ever, the TG6. We also wanna send a huge thank you, major shout out to our friends at OM System for getting us this lens a little before its actual street date. We're definitely having fun during this initial review period with it. Yeah, I've been playing around with the top side. Uh, we're gonna get it in the water soon before we gotta send it back, but it's been a blast to use so far. You mentioned having more working distance as being something really exciting about this lens. So talk to us about that and what do macro shooters need to know? What's that bringing to the table for them? Right, so the Olympus 6, the original macro lens from Olympus, that one had a pretty close minimum focus distance. So the working distance on that was pretty tight. Mm -hmm. So that's primarily why I liked shooting full frame cameras with longer focal length macro lenses because I had more working distance. Because the problem is, if you have a critter that doesn't like a diver being really close to them with bubbles and everything, they're gonna take off. So things like lizard fish or, or like a uh, sand goby or something, they'll just take off on you if you get too close to them. So I found that to be harder to shoot with a 60 from Olympus as opposed to like a full frame lens. Um, well now with the OM System 90 millimeter lens, you have more working distance. You can be further away from the critters not spook them, so it makes it easier to get the shot in the first place because hopefully the critter will stick around as opposed to taking off if you're a little bit closer. So let's talk about that two to one macro magnification, that reproduction ratio. Break that down for us. Right, so the Olympus 60, the original macro lens from Olympus, um, that one does one to one macro. Uh -huh. What one to one means is the life size. So imagine if you had a penny, you're taking a picture of a penny, the actual physical image of the penny projected onto the sensor would be the same dimensions as the actual penny. So that's why we call it life size. Mm -hmm. Two to one is twice life size. So that will give you an even greater level of detail in your image. This lens will do that on its own. Was there a way to achieve that previously with the Olympus 60? You would have to add on a macro diopter or sometimes they're called a macro close-up lens. That would be something you would thread on or flip into the outside of your camera port underwater. And what kind of caveats does that come with you know, using it? How, how, what's the challenge there? There's a few of those. Number one, like I said, you have to actually physically mount it to your camera system. So there is an extra piece of gear you need to do uh, with that. Second thing is on uh, depth of field and focus. So the way these things work is that it allows the camera's lens to focus closer therefore moving the camera closer, therefore the magnification of the subject being larger projected onto the sensor. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, you get a lot thinner depth of field. With that extra diopter on the front, the autofocus systems on most cameras have a struggle of a time focusing through a diopter. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a native lens, the autofocus system works pretty well with a native lens without a diopter on the front. So if you've got a lens that can do the power of what a diopter can do without the struggle of using it, you've got it all. Correct. And lastly, there's one other issue is that when you put a diopter on, you can't focus to infinity anymore. Mm. So that means your camera is now in a narrow range of, and how narrow that range is is determined by the power of the diopter. The higher the diopter power, the the less range you have as far as how close or how far you can be from a subject. So what's the deal with putting a diopter on the 90? Is that a thing you can do? Well, you could, but why? Yeah. And it's getting you two to one macro already, which has crazy thin depth of field to begin with. You add a diopter on top of that, it becomes an insane depth of field. Right. Um, it'll be extremely difficult to make the shot 
come out with that thin of depth of field. I can't stress that enough. Um, are there other diopters that are higher powered? You could use it with a one-to-one -one lens. It'll get you greater than two-to-one. Yes, there are. They are out there, but it's the same issue. The depth of field is just insanely thin and most shooters would not be able to pull it off. It's only like advanced shooters maybe want a tripod with something that doesn't move at all. Maybe you could get that done, but it's really difficult. So if you have a diopter, you don't need to use it. But if you wanted to, you could add it on if you wanted to get even greater than two to one macro, but it's not something I would personally recommend. How about the autofocus speed, the performance? What did it feel like? I was using it with the OM-1 and it was insanely good. You know, even at like approaching two to one macro, it was snapping the focus really, really quickly. So I'm really excited to see what it looks like underwater uh, on actual live macro critters. But so far passes the initial test. Yeah, it was great. Even with like the EPL-10, it was, it was snapping pretty good. Much better than shooting through a diopter, for sure. Hey everybody, hope you're enjoying this video. You know, you can join our family by buying your underwater photo and video gear from us here at Backscatter. Every purchase includes free lifetime tech support, will beat any price, hands down, and we ship worldwide daily. Our in-house authorized warranty service center has you covered for any maintenance and repairs. Here at Backscatter, we dive, shoot, and service everything we sell. Whether you're point and shoot or professional, we look forward to helping you meet your underwater imaging goals. Now back to the video. Next, let's get into some comparisons. So you got the Sony full frame 90, you got the Olympus 60 and you got the TG6 over here. What do we need to know? All right, so first up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at one-to-one -one magnification. So we're gonna set these lenses to one-to-one, -to -one. then you can see how far away the camera is between the 90 millimeter and the 60 millimeter. So with the 90 millimeter, you can see how much further away you are compared to the 60 millimeter one to one. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's a little bit. And so with this, we wanted to show a comparison of what it looks like the working distance from the Sony 90, which is the same focal length on full frame versus the OM system 90, um, which is on a micro four third sensor, which is about half the size of a full frame sensor. Right. Sony gives it a little teensy bit more working distance at one to one compared to the OM System 90, but they're pretty comparable. Mm -hmm. So you're getting pretty close to what you would get on a full frame 90 to 105 millimeter lens as far as working distance. And that's what we've been looking for from Olympus uh, with the 90 millimeter lens or OM system at this point. The second thing I wanted to show is on the back of the screen, when you take the picture at one-to-one -one on both lenses, what you'll notice is the OM Systems camera uh, will have a tighter crop to it. And that is due to the smaller sensor size. Optically, they're both projecting a one-to-one -one optical image onto the sensor, but because the sensor is smaller, it has a narrower field of view, and that's why it appears to be larger on the back of the screen, even though it technically isn't. Where this could come into play is if you're entering image contests and you want a nice tight shot, um, the, the OM system camera with the 90 will produce a tighter shot, especially if you need to be in a category where there's no cropping allowed. Right, okay. So if you just took the Sony and just cropped it down the same field of view as the, um, as the one on the OM camera, then it's it'll be the same at that point. But some people don't like to crop. Some people like to just shoot in camera like that. And that's what the difference is between the two. The other thing we want to compare now is two to one magnification ratio. So we're going to put this in two to one. And now you can see the distance that you're at with two to one. So for those that were concerned about getting too close at two to one with the minimum focus distance, this is actually performing really well. We still have our working distance, but we're shooting a two to one now. So we're preserving that working distance. It makes it easier to get lighting into position, makes it easier on the critters as well. So that's a really cool factor to have. So now let's take a look at the 90 and see how it compares to the TG6. Uh -huh. The TG6, like we said at the top, 
it's one of the best macro cameras ever. Um, the thing is with it, the very high magnifications come at a very close distance. Right. So let's take a look at the distance you get uh, and the magnification you get. Now, when we're looking at the Olympus or uh, OM system 90 millimeter lens at two to one, it's maximum magnification. You can see how much we have in the frame here. Now take a look at PG6 and see what the working distance is and the magnification is. The magnifications are actually pretty darn close to each other. Uh, that's that's looking pretty good compared to what a TG6 can do. Mm -hmm. Well, look at how close the TG6 has to be to doing. Right. This is, it's insanely close. And to be honest with you, when it's inside of a housing and you got to add lighting, you're probably not going to be able to physically get that close to the TG6. Right. So I would say that all things being equal, the OM System 90 will have better magnification than the best macro tastic camera ever the TG6. So let's talk controls, features, and operation. How does this lens actually work? So on this lens, there's a clutch mechanism here to switch between autofocus and manual focus. Okay. And so you move that forward or back. It's kind of problematic for operating in a housing. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing is in the menu, you can set it up so that even when the clutch is in the autofocus position, you could still put the camera into manual focus and still be able to turn the lens to be able to have a focus. That's super sweet. So another cool option you have with that is there's the lens function button on the side. Okay. And what you can do to that is assign that to be AF MF toggle. Hmm. So what you can do is you can autofocus and then very quickly with one touch of a button on the side of the lens, be able to switch to manual focus. And we were doing a little bit of testing on that. It seems like because this is a new lens, you might need to update your camera's firmware to enable that custom function. Yes, it will be dependent upon some firmware for some of the older cameras. They did come out with that when the lens was released. Um, second thing to worry about on here is the, what we call limit switch. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it limits different focus ranges. Uh, the reason being that if you're on land, you're doing portraits or something, you don't need to be focusing in the macro range for it. And there's a lot of lens move that has to happen in that area. So if you lock out those shorter distances, the AF will be a lot faster. Cool. So then if you're using the macro ranges, then you would shift into those ranges via the switch um, so that you can focus super close. So in the limit switch here, there's three positions. The first position is about a quarter of a meter to infinity. The second position is a quarter meter to a half meter. And the third position is super macro, which will get you from the minimum distance of the lens, which is about 22 centimeters to about half a meter. So the first position switch, uh, you would probably use for a more top side use. I think if you're using the slides for portraits or things like that, things that are not macro. Mm -hmm. um, this way it locks out the macro side of the focusing range of the lens because there's a lot of lens move that has to happen there and it'll speed up the autofocus when you're in those situations, working at those further distances away top side. Um, the other two uh, positions on the switch, they're more for what you use underwater. I think the middle one, you could probably skip most of the time because um, that'll take you from basically about one to one reproduction ratio to about half a meter away. Mm -hmm. And the super macro side of that switch will take you to about, um, well, it'll take you to two to one um, to about half a meter away. So it'll just opens up that two to one side where anything greater than one to one mm -hmm. in that focusing range. So if you know you're only doing one to one stuff, maybe leave it in the middle. Um, but then if you're gonna go more than one to one, you could flip it into the super macro range to um, get that focus. Seems like the kind of thing that could potentially trip you up if the switch is in the wrong position when you load the camera into the housing. What do you think about that? Yeah, you always want to check that. I mean, we've been fighting that on all the other SLR lenses and mirrorless lenses for eons now, uh, making sure that that switch is in the correct position when it goes in the housing, because <laughs> otherwise none of your macro stuff will ever focus because it's locked out. Mm -hmm. um, but with this particular one, um, you, you have the ability to have a choice on here. And when you're in super macro, it won't focus any further away than half a meter. So if you're on the edge of, a, of the size of a macro subject, you will have to switch it to the last position. So for that reason, I hope all the underwater camera manufacturers are listening when you make a new port for this lens, 
Uh, please make uh, manual focus capability, but also something for this switch as well. So as we kind of wrap up our review here, tell me, who is this lens really for? Who should be getting the most excited about this thing? Well, anybody who is a super macro junkie should get this lens. That'll blow their mind away. It's I've been blown away with just playing around with it on land right now. Mm -hmm. Focus on it super snappy fast is better than using something with a diopter on a one-to-one -one style lens like the 60. It gives you more working distance. So it's like you can be further away from the critters. I mean, that's every, everybody's talking about two to one with this thing, but the working distance is incredible. So I think you'll be able to pull off a lot more shots because the critters will be there as opposed to things that focus a lot closer like the um, 60 or even the TG6. Mm -hmm. So some of our viewers may have noticed a lack of underwater shots from this lens in this video. It's because it's so new, we haven't even had a chance to dive it yet. So I wanna throw another big thanks out there to OM Systems for getting us this lens a little early. What are our plans like for getting this in the water? Well, right now we've got some massive winter storms coming through the Monterey Bay, which makes it impossible to get out and shoot this. Um, so in a few weeks, uh, we'll be getting back into the water and uh, we'll get some shots with it for sure. Yeah, so stay tuned for the follow-up review on that. And what do people need to know about ordering this lens? What's the deal there? This is gonna be a very hot lens. Uh, we've already gotten a number of calls about it. Um, there will be limited allocation on it in the first couple rounds. So um, yeah, make sure you order early. Right on. And remember, every purchase from Backscatter always includes free lifetime tech support. We ship internationally every day, and we actually dive, shoot, and service everything we sell. I'm Robin from Backscatter, signing off. I'm Jim from Backscatter, signing off. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.